Hi guys, it's Barry again with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair. And today's victim for a demonstration before shipping is this cool uh, Chrysler system. Uh, this is a, a separate radio and 8-Track player that came out of, I believe, a 68 uh, LeBaron. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, Le LeBaron slash Imperial. <laughs> uh, it's one of the few Chrysler systems that has a separate 8-track and radio. And uh, th the uh, c conversion I've done on this system is very similar to the conversion that I do on a full Delco system with a separate radio and 8-track. Uh, not only do I modify the radio for, uh, you know, to add FM and a heck of a lot more output power, but I also convert the 8-track so that it sounds best with the conversion. Um, and the reason I do that is because uh, the conversion electronics uh, has a lot more fidelity and much more output power than the original, and that tends to really emphasize the motor noise uh, with the old uh, with with the old system because the speed control circuit radiates into the preamp circuits and uh, causes all kinds of noise. So this is a full system conversion that I do, and uh, it replaces the motor. It replaces the uh, the tape head preamp with uh, with my own. Uh, hand-built preamp and uh, just to give you an idea of what all goes into this uh, conversion job here's the radio and uh, this customer has also requested the the Bluetooth and USB features and let's see if we can get a zoom on this stuff here a little bit closer it's not really well focused but uh, this is the uh, jack for the external Bluetooth microphone if the customer decides to use it. Uh, it does have a built-in Bluetooth microphone so that uh, it, it's not necessary to use the, uh, the, uh, the outboard one. It's strictly at the customer's discretion. It would probably result in clearer voice pickup, though, if you've got the external microphone mounted on a visor where it's close to your mouth. This is the uh, USB receptacle for the USB feature. And then on the back, we've got the jacks that I've added, the other jacks I've added. Uh, this is a uh, left and right um, input to the radio from the 8-track player. And then this yellow RCA cable is a 12-volt control signal that the 8-track sends to the radio to force it into aux mode so it can play the tape. It is extremely, extremely important that you do not mix these these things up. Uh, yellow has to plug into the yellow on the 8-track player. Otherwise, you're going to send 12 volts into the uh, into the conversions preamp and you're going to blow the conversion board. That, of course, would not be covered by warranty. So. Um, that's what we've got on the eight on, on the radio, and now we'll take a look, quick look at the eight track before we hook everything up. Uh, the eight track has three uh, matching jacks. Th these three connect to the radio. That's all labeled, and then this is our aux input, which uh, in uh, in the converted system it's more practical to put the aux input on the eight track uh, rather than the radio itself. So. Uh, with all that being stated, let's go ahead and hook this stuff up. The 8-track now just has a hot and a ground wire in, the, in these RCA jacks in back. So we're just going to go ahead and hook this stuff up real quick and make sure everything works before we ship it back to the customer. And I'll explain the uh, lack of a front panel on the 8-track in a minute here. We're going to get an RCA cable, a little three-way RCA cable with a, a red, white, and a yellow connector to match the connector colors on the units and here's that this is just your basic uh, RCA AV type cable it's got a, a red white and yellow connector again it's extremely important that the yellow connector only goes into the yellow RCA jacks otherwise it's going to damage the unit so let's just go ahead and hook this thing up real quick we got the red going to the red uh, receptacle jack that is white going to the white and yellow going to the yellow okay and then the other end of this RCA cable just plugs into the uh, radio using the same color code got white red and uh, on the radio I uh, mounted the yellow jack a little bit farther away from the other so that it's easily noticed that it's uh, different and that should be addressed uh, Separately, I strongly recommend connecting the yellow RCA plug first to both units before plugging in anything else. And now this is just going to be an RCA cable that I'm plugging into the aux input so that we can test that feature too. Okay, so we have our, our interconnections almost, almost hooked up. This is our... RCA cable that for the line or for the uh, auxiliary input. I'm going to turn this stuff around so you guys can see it. Okay, and then the uh, radio 
where the conversion was done, the main conversion, that just plugs into the, it's a connector that is wired to the cars, speakers and all that by the customer or the restoration shop. So that's hooked up. And then we just need a separate uh, 12 volt supply for the 8 track player. So we'll just hunt around for a little cable for that. And here we are. Okay, and this is 12 volts that goes into the 8 track player. Naturally, red is positive and black is negative. Okay, so everything should be pretty well ready to, to go here. Uh, I didn't uh, plug the radio antenna in yet, so let's do that real quick. Antenna helps the reception. Okay, now our antenna's plugged in, everything's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and preset it to, oh, we'll, we'll do the AM first. And let me also grab a couple of uh, knobs and make things a little bit easier when we go to uh, demonstrate some of the various functions. Okay, and there's a, that one we probably don't really need so much, and we'll go ahead and put it on there anyway. It would be nice to find one more split shaft knob, and here's one right there to go on the tuner. I do not allow customers to send their knobs with the unit, so I've got my own that I use on it. Um, the reason I don't let uh, customers send the knobs is because uh, people forget as time goes by, and in the past I've had customers say, well, where's my knobs? And I said, well, you didn't put them on the radio. Well, yeah, I did. Well, okay, we took care of that. Customers are no longer allowed to send their knobs, and I am not responsible for their loss or damage, and the customer agrees to that in writing. Another thing the customer agrees to in writing is that uh, do not send any de decorative cowls or hoods or anything attached to the radio like this customer did. Uh, there, there is no reason for that. This serves no purpose, and all that's going to happen is it's going to get broken in shipping. And then here's the front panel that goes on the on the 8-track. None of this stuff is allowed to be sent. I do not accept any liabilities or responsibilities for uh, damage to this thing. If, if you send your radio attached to a big old huge piece of plastic, it, it's most likely going to get broken, and I am not responsible for it. And in fact, if a unit arrives attached to something like this, I will send it right back unserviced because that's just uh, an unnecessary... Uh, problem that could happen. I have no use whatsoever for the decorative stuff. I don't want the decorative stuff. All I want is the radio. So anyway, okay, now we are ready to fire this thing up, I think. Let's get our power supply going on here. All right, everything should work unless I've got something hooked up around, so we'll find that out in a second. Okay, we'll go ahead and test the AM first just to get that out of the way. I want to fire up my signal generator so I can feed a a signal into the line input when that time comes. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this radio on. Okay, we pick up one AM station in this area about 1130. Okay, there's the 1130. Let's make sure the dial light works. Okay, you see the dial lighting up. Okay, we get another AM station around 1400. And there's that station. Okay, now we're going to switch to FM. Now, this, since this was already an AM FM radio, there's no need to cycle the power because you just you just use the existing band switches. Now we're in FM, and there's our FM stereo light lighting up. And we'll just run it across the dial and see how many stations we get. I expect to get about 20 FM stations, maybe maybe more. Broadway debut sometime soon, in the next few years, hopefully. I plan on being on the big screen again, and. I yeah, there is so much more to cover. I really exposed at show. Superfoods a powder that helps. Week. 
Okay, so I counted about 25, uh, about 25 FM stations, so that's pretty good reception. And so we've uh, tested the AM radio, the FM radio. Let's go ahead and test the, uh, I'm going to demonstrate the virtual balance and fader functions. As I've mentioned in other videos, I do not reuse the factory fader because they are self-destructed by design and they're going to fail eventually. So there's no, there's no point in even using those because now you can use your tone control as a front rear fader and as a left right balance control. I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Let's bring our output level meters in the picture so we can see what we're doing here. There's our meters, there's our, there's our unit again. Okay, we're going to activate the left, right, or I'm sorry, we're going to activate the front rear fader. We do that by rotating our tone control twice to the right, and each time uh, returning it to its original position. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rotate this tone control roughly center, so I've got room to rotate it in both directions. I'm going to give our tone control two quick turns to the right, and we should hear four beeps through the speakers. Here's our four beeps. Okay, and now the tone control is adjusting front, rear, front, rear, okay, back to center, I'm going to let it time out, take my hand off, one beep lets us know that the function is timed out, and now we can use the tone control again as the tone control. Okay, now we're going to demonstrate the uh, the virtual left-right balance control. Same procedure, except you rotate the tone control twice to the left. So here we go. There's our beeps. Okay, now the tone control is adjusting left to right. Left. Right. Okay, and back to center. Let it time out. Okay, function's timed out, and now we can take our tone control back to where it uh, originally uh, was. And most people like it pretty much maximum clockwise, so you get the most treble and clarity. Okay, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and test the USB reader function. Here's our little USB receptacle that comes off the uh, back of the radio, and we don't need that. Uh, the Humboldt Unified School District meter view anymore, so we'll just okay. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna. I've got a. I've got my commercial recorded on the little USB stick here. I'm just gonna plug this in and make sure it automatically switches over to the USB. So here we go. Okay, there's my radio commercial. Okay, I'm going to unplug the USB stick. Radio should come back. There's our radio back. Okay, so the USB is working. Now I'm going to just activate the Bluetooth function. I'm not going to go to all the trouble of pairing it with the device and taking all that time. I'm just going to activate it to make sure it works. And the way that we activate the Bluetooth, at least one of the ways we can activate it, is to give our volume control two quick turns in the direction of higher volume, which of course would be clockwise on this radio. Uh, when it successfully activates, a female voice will come on saying, ready to pair. So here we go. Okay, I didn't give it enough rotation. Try once more. Okay, there she is saying ready to pair. And now the radio is trying to pair with a, with a Bluetooth device. Of course, since I don't have one uh, at the handy right now, it won't uh, pair with it. Uh, and in 90 seconds, the female voice will come back on saying pairing not completed. So uh, we'll just kind of keep an ear out for that. So we've demonstrated the uh, the FM, the AM, the FM stereo light works, the tuning, the, the tuning flip dial I have repaired. You can see that it flips from AM to FM like it's supposed to. Okay, now let's test the, let's go ahead and test the A-track function. And keep in mind that somewhere along the line that lady's going to come back on saying pairing not completed. Now we're going to plug an 8-track tape into the tape player. And uh, that will uh, cause the radio to automatically switch over to aux mode. So let's plug our tape in. We're going to switch tracks. Let's back it off a little bit. Alrighty, switch tracks. 
Okay. Now, uh, whether it's a Delco or a Chrysler system, when I do the full system conversion, the controls on the A track no longer have any effect because all the controlling is done by the radio. The only thing that still works on the A track unit is the track change switch. Oh, switch tracks a few more times. Not completed. Okay, there's our female voice saying, pairing not completed. Switch tracks a few more times. Okay, it may switch tracks on its own, or it may just go to the next song. I'm not quite sure how the layout on this tape is, even after using it 6,000 times. Okay, it switched tracks automatically. Switch tracks manually a few more times. Okay, we'll pull the tape back out. The radio should come back on immediately. There's our radio back on immediately. Okay, and now the last thing to test is our auxiliary input. And uh, I've got it set to Vox, meaning that it'll automatically switch to aux as long as it senses a signal at the aux input. So we're just going to feed a quick test tone into it, make sure it switches over, and that we can hear our tone through the speakers. Here we go. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? There's always something. Yes, I have my probe plugged into the wrong deal. Okay, we'll try this again. Here we go. Should switch to aux. There's our aux on one side. And there's an aux on the other side, so it's switching into aux successfully. Now, uh, after using the aux input, there is a 20-second delay before the radio comes back on. That's because of a box circuit. It holds onto the aux signal a little bit longer than necessary just to make sure that it's not going to be switching back and forth constantly between songs and during quiet music passages. So once this radio, or once, yeah, once the radio comes back on, which it just did, uh, that, uh, that concludes the test. Everything is working as it should. We've tested every function, and uh, this... Uh, system is ready to go back to the customer. And so now I can move on to the next job and bid you guys a fond farewell, see if we can find my face on here again. That's not my face, obviously. There's my face. This is Barry with Barry's 8-track and classic car radio repair. If you have an 8-track player, either for home or for car use, that's in need of service, you can reach me directly at 928-533-9666. Needless to say, I do FM conversions on classic car radios uh, with the additional possibilities of a USB reader, Bluetooth, aux input, and on some radios I can even double the number of FM station presets. Unfortunately, this isn't the type that will do that, but on a lot of Delcos, I can do that. So, um, my website is in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and we'll see you next time.